Packs your 19 inches drop. And in this video, I will give you a quick run through of the key new features. In case you haven't heard of it, Pack is an open source modular visual editor for React that lets you build your own page builder using your own components. Today, I'll walk you through the new slots API, the powerful successor to drop zones that lets you nest components programmatically, the metadata API for injecting data into every component in your config, and some major performance improvements. That said, there is even more packed into this release, so be sure to check out the full changelog, documentation, and upgrade guide in the description below. So before we head into it, I actually want to show you the app we're going to be using to showcase all of these features. Uh, the app, as you can see on screen, is something super basic. We have four components. One of them is an article that for the time being is empty. Another one is a header that just renders an H1. Another one is a subheader that just renders an H2. And another one is just the paragraph that just renders a P element. If we go into the actual implementation, what I did is scaffold a new application using our Next.js recipe. Uh, but again, like the setup works for any kind of React application. So if you're using a React router or if you're using just a, a bit application or anything like this, it will work the same way. As we can see here, we have the four different components. Uh, the article one is just empty up for the, for the time being, and it just renders out an empty article tag. Uh, the header one just renders an H1, as I mentioned before. The subheader one just renders an H2, and the paragraph just renders a P. I also went ahead and added some very basic styling here at the root level so that we can have a nicer uh, font, and it's just a little bit bigger so you can see it better and screen. And that's about it. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at the first feature, the slots API. The Slots API replaces the drops and component for nesting content with a cleaner, nicer field-based API for doing so. What does this really mean? Well, let me guide you through an example and this will clarify everything. Let's say that instead of this article, we want to let users nest some stuff so that we can have a header, a subheader, and a paragraph. So the way that you will do this with slots is that you need to define a field for that nested content, for that drop zone, if you may, for that slot, as we call it now, where you want to nest that. In my case, I'm going to name this children, but you can name this whatever you want. Uh, if you're using TypeScript like myself, you need to, of course, define the type for that new field type prop. Uh, I'm going to name mine, as I mentioned, children. And the type that I'm going to be using for this is called slot, which is a new type that we export from Measure Pack that basically tells Pack that it's going to be some nested content. Then inside of the article component where I want to nest my content, I need to, of course, go into the fields and define the new field type for it. And then we need to type it as a field of type slot. Very simple. Then inside of the render function, we can access that prop children that will expose or that will give us access to the drop zone, to the slot, and its nested content so that we can position it or put it wherever we want inside of the component. In this case, I wanted it to be inside of this article tag, so I'm just going to go ahead and invoke it here. Now, this prop of this slot field will actually be a render function. So I can call it like this, or I can actually invoke it as a component. The only thing you have to be aware of that is that you will have to rename it with a caps at the beginning because that's just how React likes to render components in JSX. I personally prefer this, so I'm just going to use it like this. So if we go back into the editor now and drag and drop an article, we will see that now the article has a nested drop zone. And inside of this nested drop zone, we can actually drag and drop some other components like a header, a subheader, and a paragraph. And you can see here that everything is getting nested under that children field. Now, this is great, but it will be great if my article, every time that I add it into the canvas, will have some default content. And that's the main benefit that this new slots API has when you compare it with drop zones. Because these are just fields, you can use the same field APIs we were already using before with other fields, like default props that we're using over here, for example, in this header to set a default title for that header, or like resolve data to actually pull some data from some backend and set it to that children prop. So for this case, let's actually show you how you can actually add a default header, subheader, and paragraph in every single new article that you drag and drop into the editor. Because let's face it, most of the times, the user will expect to have inside of an article a header, a subheader, and a paragraph. To do that, we're going to be using default props because it's the simplest and more straightforward way. So we're going to go into default props, and we're going to say that for our children field, which is our slot field, 
we want to have an array. This array needs to be an array of component data. Now, if you are not familiar with component data, don't worry about it. This is super simple stuff. But basically, you need to define the object of the data that you want to show for each one of the default components you want to add. So in this case, I will want a header. So the first thing is I need to add a type key. And this type key needs to map to this component name. In this case, it's going to be header. So I'm just going to say here, header. Then I need to tell it what are the props I'm expecting for that header. In this case, if we check here my header, you will see that I have a single prop that is called body that is basically just the string that shows the title of the header. So I'm just going to come here. I'm going to say body, and I'm going to name this header. Then I also need to add a subheader. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to name this type subheader because that is the name of my subheader component. And then the prop is body as well for that subheader. So I'm just going to change this to subheader. And then I need to do the same for the paragraph. Cool. And with this done, if we go now back into the editor, we select this and delete it so you can appreciate it. And we drag and drop a new article. You will see that every single new article that you add into the canvas now always has this header, subheader, and paragraph that we are defining inside of these default props. This is super cool and super satisfying. And this will make your user experience so much better. Because now, the user doesn't need to add an article, add a header, add a subheader. They can just drag and drop a new article, have the elements that you will have most of the times. And if they want to, they can go ahead, because it's just a drop zone, and add new stuff inside of this. Maybe they can add a new subheader and a new paragraph, because they are adding multiple sections. Now, this is all great, but you may be wondering, well, are drop zone components now completely gone? No, they are still available in the API, but they are deprecated. And that means that the soonest that you migrate, the better. So I will advise you to go through the upgrade guide I wrote in the description below, where I guide you from beginning to end on how to migrate from drop zones to slots and all the different considerations and things you have to do in between. So what is the Metadata API? The Metadata API is a new way that you have to inject shared data across all of your components in your config. So let's say that we have some data that we want to access in this article, or in this header, or in this subheader. We can now do it with the Metadata API. The way that this works is that you can pass that metadata as a metadata prop to the pack component, which is the component that renders your editor, the render component, which is the component that renders your pages, or even as a component config. So you can even come inside of this article and define a new metadata prop, and that will be accessible inside of this article component. You can then access that metadata prop directly inside of the render function or inside of your result data. So to show you an example of this, I'm just going to show you how you will pass an article ID in this context of this application that could be coming from a path param, or maybe it gets resolved in the server and then passes down to the pack editor so that we can then read it and show it just as a little span at the top of our articles. So the way that we were going to do this is we first go into whatever we're rendering the pack component, basically the component that renders our editor. And then you just pass a single metadata prop. Instead of this metadata prop, you can pass any object you want. Again, here I'm just going to pass an article ID. But you're more than welcome to pass anything you want here. I'm just going to put a random string for this. And then because you will also want to read this when you render the page, you need to go wherever you're rendering your page. In my case, this is here. But again, whatever you render a page, you will probably want to pass the metadata as well. Awesome. And now what we can do next is we can go inside of our article and read it. We can read this directly in the render function. Or if we wanted to, we could read it inside of the resolve data function. In this case, I'm just going to keep things very simple. I'm going to read it here. For reading it, we need to access the pack prop, which is the prop that provides some extra contextual information from pack inside of the render function. And then I'm just going to render that inside of a span that will say article ID. And it will just add that pack metadata. And inside of that metadata, that article ID. This metadata, again, is just going to follow the same structure that you have here, uh, however you're passing it from your pack component or your render component. Then once that we have this, we will be able to go back into the editor, refresh it, 
and we will see that we now can read that metadata prop. We're reading it and we are rendering it. Now, again, this is super basic, but what you could do is you could use this article ID to resolve maybe some data inside of a use effect, or you could use resolve data and actually do some asynchronous behavior that you want. Uh, and it will just get resolved to maybe some other prop that you want to use. Then we can even publish and we'll go back to the page itself, that render component that I showed you before, this, and it will also read that same metadata directly from there. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't necessarily need to be the same value. I could provide here 54321, and that will also work just fine. So this is super useful to actually pass contextual information that sometimes comes from outside pack, that might come from the server side, that might come from uh, some kind of third-party API we don't want to expose to the client, and we can actually pull that and then pass it as a prop and access it everywhere. So this is a pretty cool new feature that you can use to share that data across all of your components. Now, one of the biggest focuses of this release was performance. Now, performance in Pack 0.10.3 wasn't necessarily bad, but it was something that needed improvement. Now, to tackle this, what we ended up doing is migrating Pack's internal state from React Context to Sustan. This migration ended up deleting most of the unnecessary re-renders we had in Pack 0.10.3 and it massively improved rendering times of each one of the individual actions you normally take in a pack editor. Now, you will feel this right away as soon as you upgrade from pack 0.10.3 to pack 0.19, but just to give you a more concrete sense of the performance improvement you're gonna get, I went ahead and did some profiling with this very basic app you can see on screen. Now, the app is super basic. It just has a single heading block component that just renders an H1, and that has a single prop that is called title, and it just is a text field. Then I went ahead and added 20 different headers of those here in this page, and I measured the number of milliseconds that it takes to do any of the actions you will normally do in a pack editor. And the results of running that profiling are incredible. You can see them on screen right now, but basically adding a new header into that page took 82% less time. Updating a header's title took 91% less time, reordering a header in the page took 79% less time, and deleting a header in the page took 64% less time in 0.19 than in 0.18.3. And keep in mind, this performance improvement was measured in a very simple app where we just have 20 headers, each of which just renders an H1. But the moment that you start having more complex components in your pages, where maybe the, each one of them has some kind of state, and maybe that state maybe runs some complex logic that depends on some effects, that performance improvement will actually scale and be even bigger. Because thanks to Sustan, now only the components that get modified, that get reordered, that get dropped, that get uh, deleted, are the ones that need to re-render. And the best part is that this performance update isn't just internal. We have made a big effort to give you more control as a developer over optimization, which brings me to the next part of this video, the use pack selectors API. So the use pack selectors, what is it? Well, when you're creating custom UIs, for example, to create something like we were seeing on screen, where I just add a preview mode indicator, where I show if the user is editing the page or if they are previewing and interacting with the page, uh, you will normally need to access the pack context. In this case, I need to access it to know if the preview mode is edit or is interactive. But you could have the same behavior for any other part, right? Like you need to, so in some way or another, know what is going on in the editor to communicate with it and just like give feedback to the user or let the edit pack editor know if the user did something with the editor itself. The way to do it up until now was by using the use pack hook. Now, the problem with the use pack hook, which we're using right now in this example, is that it subscribes your custom UI component to the whole application state. And this is a big problem because basically what this means is that whenever the user interacts with any part of your UI, all of your custom UI components will need to re-render. And you can actually see this in this example. In this case, we only care about this very small little string that is called the preview mode. And it will change only when the user presses Control i or Command i on Mac. However, if I go back into the editor right now and I do any kind of interaction whatsoever, that will update the app state and that will then make my custom UI component, in this case, this small little preview mode component to re-render. For an example, if I grab something, it will re-render. If I drop it, 
it will re-render. Whenever I do any kind of interaction whatsoever, that will re-render my heading actions. So with pack 019, we're actually correcting this by providing a new version of the use pack hook that allows you to use selectors. Now to use this new version of the use pack hook, all that you need to do is use a new utility function we're providing that is called create use pack. So to use it in this example, all that I need to do is first import it, just as I did over here, and then call it so that I get access to the new version of the use pack hook that allows me to use selectors. So in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and call it right here, and I'm going to name the new version of the pack use uh, optimized pack. You can name this whatever you want. You could even call it use pack if you want so that it is easier to migrate, uh, but I'm just going to name it this so that you can see the difference. If you never use selectors, all that it is, is just a callback that receives a state and it expects you to return which part of the state you actually want to listen to. And it will return only that section of the state. So in this example, I'm just going to provide a selector to select only that preview mode stream. So I'm just going to say use optimize pack and then I'm going to receive the pack API. And then from that pack API, I'm going to select the app state and inside of the app state, the UI and inside of the UI, the preview mode. That will return only that preview mode string. So I can stop the structure in this and I can just say preview mode. And then I can just grab that preview mode and put it inside of my indicator. And now if we go back into the editor and we do any of the interactions that we're doing with renders before, like dragging and dropping something or selecting something or changing their props, None of these are actually triggering re-renders on our custom UI components. The only thing that will trigger a re-render on this preview mode indicator now is actually swapping between the preview mode. If we do so, we will see that it triggers re-renders. But if we don't and we trigger any other kind of event or interaction, we will see that nothing is re-rendering. And this, combined with internal performance improvements, are massive for your editing experience in Puck. Now your editor will feel way smoother, way better, and you will have more control over how your custom UIs should behave. This is just a taste of Pack 019. The full release includes many other features like custom fill icons, an university for the React Router framework, and much, much more. You can check out all of these in the full release post available in the description below. But before you go, if you're enjoying Pack, we would love it if you could drop us a star on GitHub. And if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with Puck, ask questions, or just chat and hang out, join the community on the Discord server or follow us on X and Blue Sky. Finally, if this video helped, hit like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments below what you would like to see next. My name is Fede. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.